So this is the beginning of the plaque making process. We have to um, weigh out the basic ingredients for making what's called the clay body. I always had two more for luck. In 1984, my next door neighbour was a MP. He said to me, Frank, how do you feel about making a plaque? You know, almost willing to try anything new. So we'll have a go, see if we can make it. The previous maker of the blue plaques unfortunately became ill. When he died, his widow gave us the recipe that he'd been using. But not only did it take us two years to get rid of all the problems completely, it also took another two years, having been given the recipe before we got it absolutely as we really wanted it. At the moment, we're the only people making the blue plaques for English heritage. As I used to tell my students, pottery or ceramics is full of danger. <laughs> Things do go wrong. You have to be prepared for disappointments. I'm quite elderly now and I, I, I don't rely on this for my existence, but in the, as you can see, there's been a lot of time and effort into um, perfecting the technique. In any case, you know, Sue will probably outlive me. She will continue making them for some time in the future, we hope, you know, with Justin. I mean, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I think that's a bit thick in places that can mm -hmm. be dealt with. Um, better to be thick than to be thin. We can always pare it down a bit. You're with me, aren't you? I'm mm. say go back and do that whilst it's... Now, look, mm. excuse me. And in fact, don't put any more on. Move it across. Look, mm. you've got enough on that R. And obviously, don't lick your fingers after it. I mean, I have to say this over many times you've done it. Very aware of... Um, um, interrupting somebody's concentration and what they're trying to do, and it's horrible to be um, interrupted by that. You see, you, you can put it on and it's sort of all right, but it's got to be over all right. It's about doing a job well, mm. to the best of your ability. But, but and I think I feel the same as a musician, basically, if mm. you get up on okay. stage, you've got to... Uh, what do I want to do why, here? You, if you're going to play, you may as well play well, right? I'm interrupting you, I know. Um, oh, good. You think, oh, it's just filling in, but it's, what do you think, just? Look, look you're still a bit know. thick. Mm-hmm. Um, they well, are all too thick, this line. So it's all wrong, then? Look, look just go, just do a little less, because it's, it's really such a bore to have to pare it down, isn't it? You know, if you're working with the family, it's the nature of the beast, isn't it, that you're going to have uh, criticism or interference but in a way I wouldn't know how to do any of this if they hadn't taught me how to do it. So that's I think the nature of any father to son or mother to son uh, continuity. It's literally like watching paint dry. In the business, well, I make some of the plaques and my parents make most of the English Heritage plaques. I did tiny bits of work earlier on. I mean, I remember doing a little bit of lettering for fun. I suppose more recently I've been making the whole plaques myself. I trained as a landscape architect and I've worked as a musician Architecture is one of these things, you can't do it 50%. I found it a very stressful um, career and walked away from it. I guess we all get older and basically the idea is to hand the business over to me eventually. Yeah.
I retired in 1992 when I was about 61 and down in Cornwall here it's um, very nice to walk on the coast path. I found that I was beginning to get a bit breathless. In 2013 I had to have a triple bypass. I had to continue taking pills, which is a bit of a bore, but pretty lucky really. You know, these little things, you just have to put up with it, make the best of it. Excuse finger. Never stop working. I feel I do lots of things. My first trade is stained glass. What Frank and I both do, what we've um, we've done for a few years, we've worked. You know, as a, as a, this is a real teamwork thing. Um, what's nice is the fact that here we are, right on the water. So we can work in our own time, if we get fed up, if the tide's in and the sun's nice, we can have half an hour out on the little boat and you get sort of recharged. So that's a nice way of working from home. I'm lucky enough to work um, at what I enjoy doing and who can say that? I remember my dad saying, you know, in a very responsible job, he hated every day of his working life in his office. It, it still is work, but I guess that that's um, so much better than um, being owned by somebody else and working in their time. When, you know, Frank and, Frank and I are building this up and we're getting on, it, it, it's a really important thing to know that it's going to continue and, and it's, a, it's an obvious thing that somebody who from a, a young age has been involved in doing little bits. God, I can remember when you, you really I let you do a letter. It's an obvious continuation 